Um, our next speaker is here from our NCAR archive laboratory, and um, is our archivist. And uh, am I saying that correctly? Archivist, correct. Archivist. You can call me a lab. That makes me sound. Like <laughs> 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 um, so I'd like to introduce Kate Legg. Thank you. So I'm here today to talk to you about the NCAR archives, what it is, what we do, and really why it matters. So maybe one of the first questions you have is, well, what really is an archive? It's not a data archive. Um, an archive is a place that people go to discover firsthand facts and evidence from primary sources, like old documents that include letters, meeting minutes, planning documents, also things like photos. You don't have to take the information secondhand. You can go look at the actual document, hold it in your hand, and read it yourself. So for instance, this is uh, one of the first meetings of UCAR from 1959. So you can read this document in the archives and decide for yourself really what the vision was and if we're meeting it. Um, our archives has a lot of stuff like old meeting minutes, but also photographs of all kinds of stuff, mission reports from field projects like GATE and TWIRL, correspondence from Carl Sagan, and even 16 millimeter films that show early visualizations, and also some cool scenes from um, different field projects and things like that, even the building of the Mesa Lab. So the archives itself was started in 1984 based on some recommendations for the, from the Center of the History of Physics, and also as our staff really got more interested in preserving institutional memory as they prepared for NCAR's 25th anniversary. Basically, people realized that our history was like strewn about the organization in offices and closets, and it was time to bring it together. So the NCAR archives is currently part of the NCAR library. We're charged with preserving, maintaining, and making accessible all kinds of collections that document and capture the history of this organization. So we basically collect things that, that show and document how we carry out the mission across UCAR and NCAR. So since I cover the whole organization, I collect papers of scientists, records of UCAR and NCAR divisions, UCP programs, field projects, and even oral history interviews. As I've alluded to, our collections really run the gamut of materials, so we have all kinds of interesting things down in the basement of, of this building. <laughs> so you probably want to do want to know somewhat about like what I do all day. Um, <laughs> so the job of an archivist is to curate these collections of records and other related items to help tell the story and preserve the history of an organization and its staff. So I collect, organize, and preserve all this old stuff so that you can find information from the old stuff and it actually stays relevant. So what I do is I process or I organize our history, which involves going through tons of boxes and files, sometimes quite a mess, sometimes very organized. I get rid of the mundane, like check requests and travel vouchers, all to highlight those gems that really capture the history of this place and what we're trying to do here. So besides just organizing the stuff, I take a lot of steps to actually preserve our, our historic documents. This is a really cool scrapbook that's been chewed up by rodents, not in this building, but before it came to me. Um, <laughs> part of uh, what else we do as is, is part of this preservation is we digitize things. We digitize things so you can access it, but also it helps preserve it. So you're kind of wondering, like, well, what's the point of all this organization and preservation if I can never find anything? Well, the end process of processing is to create a, create a collection guide, which is basically a keyword searchable annotated inventory. So you can actually find things again, which leads me to who wants to find things in our archives. I'll often, it's the staff here. Maybe you just need a simple answer to a factual question, like, what year did NCAR acquire the Marshall Field? Sometimes it's harder, like, I need an annual scientific report that was on this website and now it's gone. Do you have any proof or information of that? Um, our other big group of users are people from our community, local authors, CU students, people who live at the bottom of the hill who just want to know something about us. Most often they want to know about either the history, design, or construction of this building. Um, so that, that's one of our most favored collections. My other big use uh, group of users are what I call professional scholars. So university professors and students, PhD students, typically in the um, history of science. They come from all over the US and even as far away as the UK and Denmark to do weeks of research in our archives working towards their dissertations and other scholarly publications. They want to know hard stuff like the relationship between the Cold War and science. So why, does any, why do archives matter? There's this recent article in Nature that talks about the Human Genome Project, and the author basically argues that 
the history of science is just not a, it's just not a chronology of scientific publications. It's all this informal sources that really capture the political, social, and personal context that's happening behind the science. So our archives, we definitely preserve and document the context of how what's happening when the science is done here. The obstacles, struggles, fights for fundings, everything that's happening in between the published papers. If we care about documenting the discoveries of the 20 and 21st century, we have to save this stuff now. So thank you. <laughs> Great, I already see a question here. So old style letters uh, and uh, telegrams. We're on email now and we have uh, encouragement to clean out our old mailboxes. What's an archivist to do? That is actually like the 800 pound gorilla in the room of the archives field. I think what's happened too is this change from print to electronic that in the print world, staff really realized that what their correspondence was a record. I think people now view email as a very personal thing, and it's mine, not the organization's. So really, unfortunately right now, we have no systematic way of capturing email. But in the archives, I get a lot of printed out emails. Um, Warren Washington is great for this. He prints out a lot of very important emails. The problem with email is just so huge. And how do you go through? and sort out what's confidential, what's mundane. So that is definitely a question that I think about often, but I don't have a perfect solution yet. I'm curious about some of the old films and potential use for them in, in education. I'm, I'm assuming at least some of them are being digitized. I'm just curious how much that's been done, sort of what fraction of what you have, and, and um, you know, how I, much there is to do. And yeah. yeah, I probably have upwards of two to 300 16 millimeter film reels. Um, I've digitized probably about 50 of them. The NCAR Archives has a YouTube channel, and there's probably about 20 of those on YouTube right now. Um, so I would be happy to talk to you about sharing some of that, because we have some really cool old stuff. So please check out my new YouTube channel. 